Hey, uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Early Birds Weekly uh, Explorer webinar. My name is Chris Poria. Uh, this webinar series is run by Early Birds team to promote disruptive leaders, especially innovators. And we are mostly focused on startups and scale-ups uh, who have a minimum viable product or more. Today, our guest is, I would say they are kind of scale-up. Uh, from Australia called Zen Enterprise. Uh, Zen Enterprise is an Australian software business providing best of breed, out of box contract management solutions. Zen is a holistic solution provider covering people, process and technology, uh, of course with data, uh, ensuring client get the best possible return and benefit from their investment. Zen's innovative platform automates processes and workflows and connects organizations with their supplier to support improved relationships, deliver productivity gains, and provide greater transparency and visibility to key information um, and uh, uh, data. Let's welcome Brett Peterson, who is a co-founder and co-CEO of Zen Enterprise, uh, Brett is uh, going to share Zen's story and solution for around 15 to 20 minutes, and then we will have um, a Q&A session uh, in the last 10 minutes or so. Attendees, please um, share your questions through the chat box in the meantime, uh, while I hand over to Brett. Over to you, Brett. Good morning. Good morning, Chris, and thank you so much um, for providing me with the opportunity to talk about Zen, something uh, that I love to talk about. So what I'll do is I will share my screen. So just bear with me for a moment. Okay, so I hope everyone can see yep. these slides. Fantastic, thank you. So the topic, uh, the, the topic automating outsourcing contracts uh, where we've taken that from is around some of those large and complex contracts that exist. So outsourcing today can have several connotations. Uh, one is around uh, offshoring for certain services and certain work. Um, another one in terms of the origins, in terms of my background and where I came from, is very much in the ICT outsourcing space. So just move to the next slide. So sort of introducing Zen and who we are. Um, so I come from a background of where I'd work for a comp an American company called EDS, which were, an out which were an outsource provider. And then I also provided um, consulting services uh, for government in helping them with their sourcing and procurement activities um, and contract management improvement activities, primarily in the ICT outsourced environment. So um, Graham Hemsworth, the other co-founder of Zen Enterprise, had developed some programs and some coding that was helping government, Australian government organisations when they were moving to the market testing environment in the mid 90s. So there was a big, big push. It was called the Humphrey Review. And there was a big push in the mid 90s for government agencies to market test their services, which quite often resulted in them um, moving from providing ICT services in house to outsourcing them usually to large uh, large American outsource providers such as IBM, Unisys, uh, EDS, et cetera. And Graham had developed some really clever code to actually assist these organisations as part of that transition in managing the commercial activities associated with vendor management. And that capability needed to be established because it hadn't existed before. And so I knew Graham from working in other government agencies with Graham as a consultant. And I really noticed when I was working in these agencies that the commercial management of these large contracts was being done in Excel spreadsheets and it was being done in Word documents and information was all over the place. Also, a lot of the processes and the way that it was, information was being checked wasn't, being, wasn't standardised and it was done in a very ad hoc uh, fashion. And to be fair to the government organisations, it was often um, a capability that they needed to establish. But also, if you think about it, when you're checking such things as telecommunications contracts 
And you may have uh, hundreds of thousands of records that support a monthly invoice, for example. That's very difficult to check in Excel, particularly around some of the older limitations around Excel in being able to um, process large volumes of data. So I contacted Graham in 2013 and I said, well, there must be an opportunity to uh, automate some of these processes, particularly some of the clients that I'm working with. Uh, have you still got that software? Graham being the IT guy that he is, he said, yep, I've still got it on my uh, rack server at home. And I said, well, if we modernize that software and we put a nice modern user interface on it and improve the user experience, I think there's a real opportunity. I think there's a real gap in the market there to provide this software to help, help these organizations automate some of these processes. And so that's when we started. But really, we didn't start in earnest in terms of being full-time in the organization and, and growing and really rapidly scaling the organization until 2017. So there's the old tech startup saying of fail fast, fail early. Well, we sort of did the opposite to that, where we bootstrapped our business um, and self-funded for uh, about four years and we we're doing part-time consulting, if you like. So it was a big opportunity cost for us. Um, but that enabled us to develop that MVP to ensure that there was traction and to ensure that there were clients that actually wanted to consume uh, what we had to offer, but would also allowed us that opportunity during that period to really experiment and show that there was real value and that we could provide a uh, significant return on investment um, to our clients. And so our organisation, when we started, we've always been a software-led organisation. And I'll explain that a little bit in a couple of slides. I've only got about, uh, I've only got five uh, slides to go through today, so it won't be um, death by PowerPoint. But we really are a software-led organisation. So that was the foundation of, of how we started and how we developed, uh, developed our product and started our business. So just looking at a couple of use cases here. So our product is called Zen CLM. So it stands for Contract Lifecycle Management. And what we noticed is that it was really three types of uh, consumers of our software. And so uh, while these three, and I'm gonna provide just a couple of examples as use cases through each of these. So while the software, uh, it is the same software used through each of these service lines, but what we noticed was the consumption of Zen CLM, the configuration of Zen CLM was used slightly differently for different client types. And so what we found was the contract expense management component, and that's really around invoice management, if you like, uh, for suppliers. That was how we started our business. And going back to what I was saying before, when we started in 2013, we're looking at those big IT outsourced agreements. And if you think about it, uh, organizations are still spending a large portion of their money of their funding and their budgets, or an increasing portion of their funding and their budgets um, on ICT. And a large portion of that is being, um, is being outsourced or is being provided by different suppliers. So that was the genesis of Zen CLM, where we started as a contract expense management solution. And in fact, when we started Zen, that was actually what the system was called. It was called Zen Chems. What, we've, what we were able to do then though, was we're able to actually invest across a broader range of functions and capabilities. And that's where the CLM component came in. But just looking at the CHEMS component for a moment, what Zen CLM does is it digitizes those large complex, uh, they typically can be quite large complex agreements. So what I mean by digitize is it takes the service level agreements, the key performance indicators, the milestones, the different performance metrics associated with those contracts, and it and it provides those as digitized records within Zen CLM, so that when uh, the monthly invoice comes through, and with all the supporting information that comes through with that, it can automate the full checking process. So Zen has the concept of the pricing catalog. So when the invoice comes in, so the invoices come in. Um, typically, people are used to seeing those sort of the PDF style invoices. When we're talking about um, the outsourcing agreements, they'll typically come through with a whole lot of supporting information as well. Uh, and with that supporting information, what Zen does is it actually automatically checks all of the invoice information. It so automatically provides an upload process for bringing that invoice information through. Um, with these vendor arrangements, they're typically strategic in nature. 
They can be multi-year high value. Um, and so what we can do, so what the vendor can do is they can actually just email the invoice straight into the system. Zen automatically then checks, does 27 points of checking against all that inf invoice information. It checks that it's a correctly rendered invoice. It checks the unit rates. It checks the GST has been calculated correctly. It checks all the transactions. So for one client, for example, we're bringing through several hundred thousand uh, records every month to support the different invoices that come through on their uh, dozen strategic ICT contracts that they hold. And it checks every single transaction. So every phone call, for example, it captures all the metadata. So it then provides that reporting and analytic capability. Um, but then it groups the transaction. If there are issues or exceptions, it groups those issues and groups the transactions by the issue type. So it's doing uh, proactive problem management and it provides that in an issues register. So it really simplifies that process to say, what are the components that have been correctly checked? So that then those, just those components could be paid or if there are, ex, um, or the invoice quite typically may be paid in full and then those exceptions can be managed through the uh, performance, performance module within Zen CLM. Other areas, for example, are um, introducing, say, a pre-approval, we've helped introduce with our clients a pre-approval process so that that actually helps the supplier and it helps the client. And again, it helps to improve that relationship between the supplier and the client. Then they can focus on um, some of the strategic outcomes that they want to deliver as part of that contract. So by way of example for that, pre -approved, what I mean by pre-approval process is where the supplier will supply the information um, early um, associated with the invoice, so all that supporting information. It can then be checked by automatically checked by Zen CLM and any exceptions can be dealt with before a final invoice is issued. And then when that final invoice is issued, um, the supplier can be paid more quickly. Um, so uh, I remember when I worked at EDS, day sales outstanding, so DSO. So the, the, the number of days the invoice was outstanding before it paid was actually a really important metric and was actually built into the incentive programs for the senior executives. So it was incredibly important to try and get that DSO down from a supplier side. Well, this, by having that pre-approval process and using Zen CLM to support that, that actually helps to improve uh, the metric from the supplier side. And then that also um, helps from the client perspective because they know then that they've got a, a correct invoice that's been fully, fully assured. So for the health services, um, so what we mean by health services commissioning lifecycle there is um, within Australia, there are uh, over 30 primary health networks. And so those primary health networks go through a, um, and they're providing uh, health services to their catchment areas, so to the local communities. And those services might relate to uh, mental health, um, supporting GP clinics, um, alcohol and other drug issues, a whole range of um, uh, health issues um, particular to a local area. And what those primary health networks do, and in fact, state governments as well, they'll set up, they'll, each year they'll go through a cycle of commissioning services. And that cycle very much follows a contract management life cycle in that they'll go through a process of um, establishing a business case, determining needs and requirements for services, then going through a procurement process and then managing those contracts for the delivery of those services. So it actually um, fits in quite well with Zen CLM and the life cycle management process. But what we've done there for, um, what we've done there to make it more unique to the health sector is that then um, those services are then aligned to what they call activities. So using our projects module, what we've done is we've aligned the contracts to the different activities so that then um, management within the primary health networks can get that portfolio view and understand exactly where services are at in the commissioning life cycle. Um, and they can also then drill through to get a view of um, the contracts and the performance of those contracts and then the cost of those contracts. So then they can report to government. So it's providing that, um, so what, so our product there for Zen CLM is commissioning lifecycle management. 
But again, remembering it's using the same out-of-the-box solution, um, the, the same generic Zen CLM out-of-the-box solution, but for a slightly different purpose. And so that's our, that's our um, uh, health services commissioning life cycle um, product called Zen Health. And with that, then um, the executive are able to move away from and, and staff are able to move away from using disparate systems, disparate processes, uh, having to spend weeks to uh, meet their ob reporting obligations to government for their quarterly and half yearly reporting obligations. They can automatically um, generate reports straight out of Zen CLM. And then more broadly, um, the Zen CLM product that then um, supports a whole range of activities um, relating to um, the procurement process right through to um, contract management. We've also got a service request module. So, for example, for those outsourced agreements, um, the, you can actually raise service requests through the system. It actually links through then into the contract changes, and those contract changes then flow through into the core contract management functionality. Also has full workflow. So that workflow is utilized um, in the health in the health product so that they've got that full uh, commissioning life cycle, but also uh, workflow associated with um, procurement and the actual contract management activities themselves. Um, the service request component that I was talking about has the shopping cart feature that links then into the catalog that I was talking about earlier. And we've also got full contract authoring and clause libraries that clients can then set up. So they can have templates for contracts and they can have different clauses that they can then basically um, pick and choose. It's like a, a Lego kit. They can fit things together. Um, and, and Zen CLM also has the full audit trail then associated with any contract changes, et cetera. So the, and the reporting and analytic capability is quite comprehensive, including a dashboard. What I deliberately haven't done is I haven't set up a, I'm not going to provide a demonstration because there's simply just not enough time today. But what I would do is I welcome um, the opportunity to provide a demonstration um, of Zen CLM to anyone um, after this session, please feel free to reach out. I can do that. So, so one thing we have noticed with, um, with doing software implementations, and this is certainly something Graham, the, the co-founder, and I had been involved with um, pre-Zen as well, uh, was looking at people, process, technology, and data. So uh, what we noticed was doing software implementations um, that it went beyond just what the software could do and trying to implement software in accordance with existing processes and with sometimes some pretty crappy data, um, and also just ignoring the people components. So what we found was our approach Zen Enlighten takes into account all of those four components, and it utilizes the combination of our um, software product, but also our consulting expertise uh, of our staff. And so what we do there is, uh, what we notice is that um, quite often the processes are non-standard, uh, with a client, or they want to automate existing processes. Zen CLM comes with uh, out of the box templates that then allow pr um, processes to be changed, to be standardized, and to be in, in accordance with better practice. And by doing that, um, the benefits can be really compounded. There can be a pretty short term view when um, software is just being sold um, for the sake of providing. We're seeing these really short turnaround cycles. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the benefits, the return on investment is sustainable. It's over the long term and there's the best use of the technology. So that user adoption part is really critical to ensuring the success. And so by way of example for that, I, I noticed that um, particularly around some of the commercial management aspects associated with processes, people can be really proud of the spreadsheets they've built. And they've been building these spreadsheets and improving them over many years, sometimes 5, 10, 15 years. And so just to slap in some software and just toss out the spreadsheets can be quite confronting to people. And it's understandably, they can be quite proud of what they've done and they can be doing that really well. Um, 
So we really need to be cognizant of that and we really need to recognise that um, there's a journey around end user adoption. There, there's almost an internal sales job as well that needs to be performed to ensure that people really want to take up the technology. Of course, there's a blunt instrument approach of uh, using using the stick as well, saying you must do this. But what I find around um, breaking down end user resistance and, and improving user adoption, certainly I think the, the carrot is often um, much better than the stick. So involving, involving as part of the implementation process, involving staff in, in co-design, um, the way Zen CLM set up now, it's, it's um, quite often much more of a platform, if you like, so what we'd call a low-code solution. So it's highly configurable to meeting clients' needs. So we can have that, we can have that co-design with staff. That in then empowers them as owning the system and making decisions. Um, and it really breaks down those barriers instead of trying to force it on them. Um, so we really like to take our time um, making sure we get that right because that's where the long-term sustainable benefits will be derived um, by clients. And so also as part of that, what we've found is we do like a proof of concept. So we include that as part of a baseline review. So it includes our consulting and our software um, covering those four components that I just talked about, typically three to four months. And this might be before a client's even decided to buy, buy some software. What we'll do though is uh, we'll go through and do a consulting review. So we'll do a maturity assessment. We'll do a gap analysis covering the people, process, and technology components. And then we'll provide a series of outputs to inform to inform um, clients around uh, informing them of, of, of developing a business case. So that then they are or also looking at um, some improvement in process and other aspects around data provision, et cetera. So we can work with the client and parallel to that, we will then uh, run a proof of concept and we'll actually set up our system so the client can actually use it for a particular contract um, by way of example. And just very, and lastly, around our product roadmap. So um, being an SME, our product roadmap is heavily informed um, by our client feedback. And again, a product roadmap uh, will align it to these three key areas around ex contract expense management, our health service, and then the broader um, contract life cycle management. So we'll continue to evolve our product roadmap. One area that we're um, in accordance with client priorities, one area that we're putting a lot of focus into at the moment is around artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we've made some big headways over the course of 2020, and certainly over 2021, we'll be investing a lot more uh, in helping to automate, um, by way of example, the invoice processing um, so that um, machine learning can deal with variations in invoices and automate a lot of that process um, for clients. So I just noticed um, I've moved up to about 10.27 now. So um, I love talking. So on that basis, what I might do is I might stop sharing and pause at that point and hand back over to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Brett, and uh, great presentation. Uh, really appreciated that. So maybe we can take some questions. So attendees, uh, please type in your questions through the chat box. Um, I could already see some questions coming through. Uh, the first one coming from Jeff for SAS and PASS, et cetera, the billing can be significant number of lines. Um, how do you harvest this data and reconcile these complex bills? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question. Certainly SaaS, PaaS, um, a lot of these cloud services, um, the way that the data comes through, it can be um, quite exhaustive. So uh, what we have is we have a set of uh, upload filters that are highly configurable in accordance with the um, contracts that are in place. Um, so that's all, that's all part of that digitization of those contracts and digitization of the um, pricing and the service level metrics. And so we bring that data through and we have what we call ETL, which is extract, transform, load. So uh, very sophisticated upload um, processes that bring all of that data through and check all of that information record by record. And the turnaround time on that is quite quick. So typically we'll do it as part of an overnight processing available the next day with all of the exceptions um, that have been processed as part of that. But as well as 
all the records, all those individual line items, those hundreds of thousands of line items, can all be then viewed um, and analysed within um, Zen CLM as well, and in terms of utilising that um, analytic capability. Great. Uh, thank you, Brett. Uh, um, and attendees, please type in your questions if you have any questions through the comment box, through the chat box. Um, so I have a question here, Brett. Uh, so it seems that you already got number of public sector customers. What are your potential typical customers that you would be looking beyond public sector? Yep, sure. So um, beyond public sector, I think people are picking up on the theme that, of what I've been talking about here around one of the core strengths of Zen CLM, because remembering there's over 300 contract management solutions out there. So one of our key points of difference in our core strengths is in digitizing and automating those large and complex contracts. So um, ASX listed companies, so if we just think of Australia, or organisations that are spending uh, $20 million a year typically uh, on um, outsourced or supply-based services. So that, that can include some large, uh, some of the larger SMEs as well. Um, so where they've got, where you've got multi-year, um, large or, or strategic contracts in place, Zen CLM can provide significant uh, return on investment through productivity gains, through avoidance of cost leakage and through reducing risk um, for organizations. That's great. Um, thank you for that, Brett. I think you have also covered Nicole's questions that uh, she asked uh, if you can summarize three reasons. Uh, Zen is the preferred solution for any customer with complex contractual arrangements. So thank you very much. So you said cost is yeah. one, risk is another one. Um, and the third one is? Uh, so productivity gains. Productivity gain. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I think um, everybody is looking for that. Uh, uh, so it seems that um, the customers uh, that Zen will be most uh, attractive will be uh, anybody who got big contracts looking uh, to simplify that engagement, especially outsource engagement. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, organizations like that in, uh, of course, in public sector, but then in banking finance and in uh, energy, mining, uh, those kind of, um, and of course, in services and education, uh, there are a number of customers um, who could take advantage of uh, the capabilities you have. Uh, so we really appreciate uh, for you to uh, uh, be our guest today. And I'm sure that number of people are going to reach out to you. Um, and uh, of course, people can reach out to Jeff and myself if you have any questions and we can always uh, connect you back uh, with Brett. So Brett, thank you very much uh, for today and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Great. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you, Jeff, and thank you to Early Birds for providing me with this opportunity to talk. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thanks all. See you in the next week. Cheers. Cheers.